I already made a video before on what I carry on my person, my everyday carry, but this is just my backpack and I do carry this every single day whether I'm at work or I'm at a restaurant, I carry this everywhere. So now keep in mind it's not a bug out bag, it's not some ultimate survival bag, it's just basic things I use um, every day. Now I'm a very outdoorsy person so there will be a lot of outdoors gear, but there's more things to that. I just wanted to kind of show what I carry. Okay, so let's go ahead and start on the outside. Um, I happen to have just this plastic military canteen I got from a surplus store. This is my water bottle everywhere. I, you know, I fill up my water at home and then take it, you know, if, if I'm in a restaurant or anywhere like that. Just a plastic canteen bottle. Okay. I also happen to have a lighter for just, you know, emergencies if I can't, if I lose my ferro rod or whatever the case may be, just... One should always have at least three ways to make fire when you're outdoors. You never know if you lose equipment or break equipment or, hell, you could get your equipment stolen. <laughs> you know, so just always understand that concept to have at least three ways to make fire. Okay, on this side, I happen to have my iPhone charger. We live in a world where our cell phones are just imp as important as our knives, so understand that. Okay, now I have my canteen. This is a Self-Reliance Outfitters Canteen. It can hold 32 ounces. Okay, so this is what I use if I'm um, boiling water to make it drinkable or if I'm, let's say I'm making hot chocolate, uh, coffee, anything. It comes with its nesting cup. So while it, I could be boiling water while I'm stewing up or boiling some meat, anything along those lines. I have an old cotton bandana I use here. Um, man, this bandana has been with me for a couple of years. I don't know if you can, No matter how many times I wash it, it's just... But 100% cotton, so I could, you know, use this for hygiene. I could use this for first aid if need be. Make char cloth, the filter. You'll be watching that video soon where I could use this as a filter for cleaning water. I have the top to the cup. And an extra bandana. I never use this one, actually. I always forgot it was in here. But... Just quite a large bandana. Once again, just uh, whether it's hygiene or anything, anything you need a bandana for, it's in here. Okay. Now over here on the side, I have uh, my pet dog. <laughs> I found this dog a long time ago, um, and I kept him. And he's a little beat up now, but he's my companion. He always comes with me in all my adventures. Uh, but I, it always reminds me of that Tom Waits lyric from Cold Cold Ground, uh, where he says. Beware of my temper and the dog that I found. And I don't know, I just think it's really cute. So I keep my little dog. And then in this pouch, I have a magnification lens I got from Self Reliance Outfitters. You know, to, once again, to either make fire you know, using the sun, or um, say I have a sticker or something that I really kind of need to look closely on. This is what I use that for. So. Once again, another way of making fire. You'll see I'm loaded with those things. You just backup ways and then backups of backups. Okay, now in here I happen to have uh, two books. Now, I'm a big reader. I am an extremely big reader. So I'm always reading something, whether I'm in, at break at work, uh, right before bed. And uh, yeah, so I mean, it's always changing. Now, I, I do have the Bushcraft 101 by Dave Canterbury. So, when I'm out here, this always comes in handy. This, you know, whether, uh, this is just all wilderness skills. There's, uh, you know, recipes for cooking in here. There's ways to make shelters, things like that. So this is always helpful. And then this is, con that's always here. And then this is constantly changing. This is just for entertainment value. And this is a Cormac McCarthy's uh, Blood Meridian. Okay, so this is my all time favorite book. And uh, this is gonna be my 16th time reading it, so. Uh, I love this. I mean, if you've ever seen the film No Country for Old Men, this is the guy that wrote that book. This is something that blows that out of the water. So as soon as I'm done with this, I'll place another book. I either buy another book or go to my shelf and pick up an old favorite. So yeah, books. Okay, this is my Mora Companion. And um, this is my backup knife. Now, I always have two fixed blades, at least two or three knives on me. This is just in case I lose them or I damage them or, or anything like that. This is my backup. And everyone, you, if you know knives, you know Moras are lightweight, they're handy, they're sharp. I modified the back so we can start to strike fire with the ferro rod. So, old faithful right here. Okay. 
okay? Just a notebook. When I'm shooting these videos, my first couple of videos I tended, I tended to stutter a lot because I didn't, you know, it was just off the cuff. Now I kind of try to stay with a, with a certain amount of dialogue, you know, just to be a little bit more organized, make sure I don't leave things out. So I just, this is relatively new. This grill, I have this little piece of grill that I salvaged from work. They were throwing it away. And uh, I just thought this can actually help me out when I'm making a fire and I could just place things over this while I'm on the fire. So that helps out. Then I have my, uh, my notebook. Now, as much as I enjoy bushcraft and outdoors things, I also like to do other things. I, I design my own magazine. I also design my own comic book. So when I'm sketching, I'm working on something, this is where I'm at. This is where I work on my stuff. So it's a little unorganized here, but my comic book. Oh, well, you see enough. Anyways, we'll move on from there. Okay, now for the inside. Oh, I'm sorry. I left something out, and this is my Baco Laplander. This I got when I was heading to Ohio for the basic training class for the Pathfinder School. And this is a handsaw, okay? I got this from Self-Reliance Outfitters, and it comes with this leather sheath. It fits in really tight, and this is great for if you're making shelter. You need to chop wood to make it smaller so you can make fire. This is a cutting tool. No, I don't want to carry an axe. We live in the desert. Those axes are just too cumbersome here. I'd much rather just have this available. Okay, and I just tied it on with some paracord, so it's on my strap. And um, right before I forget, this bag I got from Bud K. It's nothing fancy. It, it was just about $20. It's supposedly a Sheck military, you know, a pack. I don't know the authenticity. I don't know how true that is, or it's just some cheapy thing from Made in China. But it's worth so far, at least for everyday things. And uh, yeah, let's head on inside. A little bit of paracord. I'm almost out of rope. Okay. Now in here, I have my flint and steel kit. Okay, so just a couple of my favorite rocks that I like to use. And this, I'll make a video on this soon enough. And this is just pretty much I don't know if you can get the close up. Okay, so just one of the oldest ways to make fire in human history right here. So that's a favorite of mine. So my flint and steel kit. Now, in order to have the flint and steel work, or at least make it a lot easier, I also have, this is my charring tin. This is how I make char cloth. And uh, here's my char. So I'm gonna throw a little part, couple of sparks from the rocks goes in here and you've got yourself a fire. I also have a little bit of a cotton ball, just in case for emergency, to make fire, and some steel wool. And I'll elaborate on that for later. And then I have a needle in here, a repair needle. Okay, this is a ferro rod. Now, I always have two ferro rods on me at all time. So this is basically like a third backup, once again. Always have ways to make fire. And this is a great starter one too. If you're barely starting into outdoor things, bushcraft, you can just buy this for like 14 bucks at Walmart. And it's a Gerber Bear Grylls one. I know Bear Grylls things are crap, but this fire rod is actually pretty good. Okay, AAA batteries for my flashlight that I have on my hip. A 9 volt to make fire using a maybe connect the 9 volt to a, the steel wool that I was that you saw earlier. You can make fire that way. I'll make a video on that later. So not not enough time right now. An empty Altoids tin for a future video I want to make on showing how to make char cloth. So you'll see you'll be watching this soon. Okay, mechanical pencil and eraser. Once again, I draw a comic book, so these things are always close by a backup pen for either work or I need to write something. Okay, then I have a steel uh, pencil sharpener. Now this can help in both ways and actually, uh, if obviously when you're drawing, this helps to sharpen your pencils, but it can also help outdoors 
to make shavings to make fire. Let's see if I can uh, improvise really quick. So if you don't want to make feather sticks or anything like that, see these shavings right here? You can make a little pile of these and just uh, strike it with the ferro rod, anything along those lines, a lighter, and that's going to start catching fire and you start going, you start putting other fuel sources on there and you can get a fire started. So this helps both in my artistic hobbies and on my outdoors endeavors. So this is a good, good little tool. Okay, now I have this for my truck because I don't want to get locked out. You know, so in case I leave my keys inside my truck, you know, when coming home from work or going, you know, getting out of my house, and I, it's happened before that I left my keys in my truck. I always have this as a backup. Just click and, you know, save yourself some heartache. I almost forgot on this side. This is just a off the cuff video. We're just, uh, we're just I had extra time out here, so decided to make this one. So I didn't get a chance to get organized. This kind of stuff. I have a shemog down here. I got this from a military surplus store. So this is just a big cotton bandana. So if I need this as a blanket, or if I need this for a sling for my arm, if I hurt myself, or to put it over my head on, on a cold night to keep warm, this always comes in handy. You always see uh, images of soldiers in Iraq or something around their necks. So yeah, this helps out. And that's about it. Once again. It's not the ultimate. It's not the ultimate survival bag. It's just it's something that helps me out every day, whether I'm fishing or I'm at home drawing, or I'm up. I'm on break at work. So, you know, hope you guys pick something up from here. If you have any suggestions to add or subtract to my pack, then I'd like to hear them. Well, thank you for watching.